Hello and uh, welcome and I appreciate you watching the video and I appreciate everyone's flexibility uh, for allowing me to do a pre-recorded lecture for today. So uh, I want to continue on uh, on our discussion of lists as lists are you know perhaps one of the most important data structures that we have in Python. I believe we left off on, um, on Wednesday we talked about slicing lists and using the kind of the colon notation to kind of show you know where we start and where we end to kind of slice out or subset uh, certain elements from within a list. Now, one thing that uh, that I mention uh, regarding lists um, uh, frequently is that lists are mutable. Okay, so when you use a method that changes a list that method actually changes the list itself and in python when you um, assign uh, an object to a name what we're actually doing is uh, you know that name serves kind of as a pointer that refers to the uh, the object in memory so if the list is um, if, an, if there are multiple names pointing to the same list, then uh, when you modify the list, you know, uh, both of those names will point to the same modified uh, object. So let me um, demonstrate this, okay? So first I start off by creating a list, and we call this list fam. So the name fam points to this object, which is this particular list. And in this line of code we print out what fam is and it's going to be exactly what this thing is All right here i'm going to um, take the name uh, take that list fam and i'm going to give um, another create another object with the name second okay but second is really just another name that's pointing to the exact same object which is this particular list okay and so what i'm going to do here is kind of using um, list subsetting we are going to change the zero index element here from Liz we're gonna change it to the name sister okay we're gonna change that that um, string from Liz to sister and then I'm going to print out the um, the object which is referred to by the name second and it will show that this it will show uh, this list where the, the first element is sister. And then if I print out fam, which is also just another name pointing to the same thing, it too also um, contains the, uh, the value sister. So both of these names, second and fam, they're just two names for the exact same object. And so when, we, um, when we've modified this, this, uh, this list, they, um, these two... Uh, <laughs> The, the same object has been modified, okay? Um, over here, however, I'm going to create a copy. I'm gonna create a copy of the list. And, um, and so um, I start off, this is, so when, when you use this equal sign, okay? And, uh, and I have these square brackets, I am um, I'm creating an entirely new list, and now the name fam points to this entirely new list. Um, and so here I'm going to uh, print uh, print this out, and it will be this entirely new list. Here I'm going to uh, create a copy of the list. Okay, so here I'm going to take fam, and I'm going to slice out, and I don't specify a beginning and an end, so that's going to slice out all of the elements. So that's basically going to create copy of the list and I'm going to give the name um, that copy the name second okay so second is going to be a copy of this thing here I'm going to modify the zero index element in second to be sister I will print out second and I will also print out fam and what we will see is that the um, so this is fam in the beginning the second which is the copy um, the that zero index element is now sister, but then the original list, okay, the name fam, which still points to this original list, is un unchanged because here the um, second list 
is is a copy and it, it doesn't point to the same object so um, so that's what uh, that's the uh, that's the difference there okay um, I'm gonna create another I'm gonna create another copy so I'm gonna do fam dot copy so that's another way you can do you can slice with uh, basically no references and I will uh, no beginning no end it's gonna slice out all the elements here I can just do fam dot copy and it's gonna create another copy so that's another way we're using the copy method um, I print this out it's gonna look exactly the same it's gonna start with Liz here we're gonna change the uh, the one index element from uh, 1.75 to 1 point, uh, 1.73 to 1.65 we'll print that out and again because it's a because it's a copy that element is changed but then fam which um, which points to the uh, the original thing is uh, is un unmodified and so that remains um, 1.73 okay um, uh, going on here the uh, we can refer back to this uh, this original list fam uh, same same thing that we have um, here I'm going to take fam and throw it into a list okay and this too will uh, will end up creating a copy okay so here if, if you just take a list and put it inside um, the the function list list 2 creates a copy and so uh, when I change the one index element from say 1.73 to 1.9 it, it changes and then that original uh, the original list fam is uh, is unchanged. Okay, and um, and if you want, you can also you can also um, change multiple elements uh, in conjunction with list slicing. Okay, so here uh, if we print out fam, what we will see is you know we'll have this list. And what we're going to do is we're going to slice from the first to the third comma. So uh, we're going to slice out 1.73 Emma, and we're going to replace it with the elements 1.8 Jenny. And so, um, so we can see, you know, we started off with fam. We did this operation where we're going to take um, the elements 1.8 and Jenny and assign them to that slice from one to three, and this is the resulting list. Okay. Um, so those those elements in the list have now been replaced with uh, the elements that we've provided here. So so that's another thing that uh, that can happen is that we can um, replace elements um, in a list with a uh, with with slices of them. Let's take a look at a few um, few elements, and we saw uh, we have we've already seen uh, list dot copy but let me show you um, list.append, okay? So here, um, I start off with this list, and again, I'm creating an entirely new list when I do this, okay? And I'm going to take that list and I'm gonna run the append method. And so the append is just gonna, it just tacks on. You take a, it takes an element here, and, uh, and we just kind of tack, tack it on here. All right, so let me let me just show you um, append just appends an object to the end of the list that's uh, that's that's basically it okay um, um, okay so here you know um, I wrote unlike R you don't have to capture the result of a function so in R if you wanted to kind of add something to an object you'd have to kind of do that object, and then you have to save it back to the uh, the object itself. But here, um, that's it. Okay. Now, one thing about appending is you can only append one item, right? So here, when I append me, uh, me gets appended to the uh, the end of this list fam. Okay. Um, one other thing that you can do with um, with lists is you can kind of Add things or extend a list by um, by using the plus operator. So the plus operator um, will take you know two two lists and kind of concatenate them together. So here I can take um, uh, currently fam is this, and I can take a list, and this is a list with just one element, 1.8 in it, 
and uh, and we can kind of tack it on. Now, if I do that, um, this this operation of uh, the plus where you concatenate two lists together, um, by default, well, not by default, it just it just doesn't um, modify the list itself. Okay, so it's kind of like if you do three plus four and you get the number seven, we're not actually changing the number three to the number seven. Three remains three, four remains four, um, and the result is seven. So it's just gonna, if you just do the plus, it's gonna show you the result of kind of concatenate the, concatenating these things together. If you wanna sa save that, um, here I'm gonna take, take that um, result and store it back into the list called fam, and, um, and then I'll, I'll have the result, okay? So here I've, um, added or appended or uh, I guess concatenated this list with one element 1.8 to the end of the list and this is the result okay um, I can further take this um, this list as it's defined uh, which is uh, fam and I can append the string uh, miles to it and now um, now we have this okay and here um, now I have a list with four elements in it, Miles, 1.78, Joe, and 1.8. And if I do this, okay, um, whoops. So, so currently this is what fam is, and if I, if I run this, what it's going to do here is it appends the entire object as one entry, okay? So notice what we have, we have, uh, and, it, and this is just a, something that um, Python does when you um, print out really long lists is it, it breaks it across multiple lines. But you can see that um, now I have a list inside the list. So it didn't actually um, add four elements here. It just added one object uh, that has four elements in it. So if I wanted to say, um, you know, take this thing, which I guess has eight elements in it, and I wanted to add four more elements so that we have a total of 12 elements, then I, would, I could use the plus, plus operator, which would kind of concatenate the two things together. Um, but notice um, I didn't store it equal to anywhere. I didn't store the result of this back to fam. So what's gonna happen is I run this and we get the whole, um, the entire list, which has everything together. And, and now um, we can see uh, the original eight up through here, and then uh, you know the additional four. So this this has to a total of twelve items in it. But again, because I didn't store that result, if I ask what is fam, fam is still only going to have these uh, eight elements in it. Right. So so those are, these are ways how you can kind of work with lists, uh, adding uh, you know appending I items um, to it, or you know um, concatenating multiple lists together using kind of the uh, the plus operator. Um, you can also take a list and you can use multiplication, which will basically um, <laughs> concatenate multiple things. It's, it's kind of just like, um, you know, if you, like, here, let me just kind of show you quickly. Like if I do uh, fam times two, um, you know, it takes, uh, you know, goes from Liz through dad uh, 1.89, and then it basically um, concatenates another uh, list of, uh, of length eight to it. So that's what we have. Um, when we talked about making copies of lists, one thing I said was this makes something called a shallow copy, a shallow copy. And there's, um, there's also this concept of a deep copy, all right? And, um, uh, and it's a little bit strange and I think, uh, it's best explained using, um, with a, with a few examples. Okay, so when you use list.copy or, um, you know, if you slice a list with, a, with no beginning, no end, you're going to get something called a shallow copy. A shallow copy will create a copy of the list, um, but if that list, within the list you have references to other objects, it only copies the references and not the objects themselves, whereas uh, a deep copy will create a copy of the list and will create copies of the objects that the list references, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go through uh, a couple examples to try to 
demonstrate uh, the difference between a shallow and a deep copy here. Uh, but before I do that, let me go ahead and give you your first view quiz answer. So today's first view quiz answer is the letter A, A as an apple. A as an apple will be your first view quiz answer for today. All right, so let me, um, let me demonstrate the difference between a shallow copy and a deep copy, okay? So here, I create um, a list A, which has um, three elements, A, one, and two. And then I create a list B, which um, has three elements, B, three, and four. And then I have a list C, and list C contains A and B. And so, um, actually, let me uh, let me just show you what what these things look like. Okay. Um, so here is A, and here is B. Oops. And here is C. Okay. So A is A12, B is B34, and C, which has a reference to A and B, is a list containing two lists, uh, A12 and the list uh, with B34. Okay. So now I'm going to, um, here, let's, uh, let's uh, split this. Okay. And so, um, D is going to be a copy of C, and E, D is a shallow copy of C, and E is a shallow copy of C. So right now they look they look the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take list C, which looks like this, and I'm going to append X. I'm going to append just the uh, character X to it. All right? And let's print out what C looks like what D looks like, and what E looks like, okay? So here I'm going to append uh, uh, X to C. And so C uh, has A12, B34, and now has X, okay? D is a copy of C, and E is a copy of C, and, and those things are unchanged because they're copies. So we haven't, we haven't modified them um, because those are copies. Okay, now, uh, now look what happens. I'm going to append the letter Z to A. So again, A is this, A1 and 2. I'm going to append a Z here. I'm going to append a Z here, and then I'm going to print out C, D, and E. Okay. And so when I do this, um, when I append Z to, uh, to A and, and I ask, you know, what is C? Again, C is defined as uh, a reference to A and a B with an X in it. Okay. This now has A12, Z, because A has a Z appended. Uh, it has B34, and it has X. D, D was a shallow copy of C, right? So D was created using uh, C colon bracket, or bracket colon bracket, okay? And so that, that cr uh, created a, a shallow copy of C, which re references object A and object B. And so now object A, that referenced object, um, now has a Z. So uh, D has A1, 2, and Z, and then it has B3 and 4. Whereas E, E was a deep copy of C. So when we printed out, you know, what is E, e and it had A1, 2, and B3, 4, these are copies. These are copies of, of these lists. They are not referencing or pointing directly to this. Okay. Whereas over here, when we saw A1, 2, it's actually pointing to this object A up here. So if, if I ask, um, you know, if I, if I put in, you know, what is A? A now contains that. And then, um, and D, which again, uh, has a reference to A in it, will have, um, you know, contains Z. So, so that's, um, that's the difference between a shallow copy and a deep copy. I hope, I hope these examples make sense. And um, again, you can, um, just just kind of play around in Python and see you know what, what happens and does it have the kind of uh, expected the behavior that you would expect um, you know when you do these things okay here's uh, here's a couple more um, methods that um, that you can run with a, with a list okay so um, you can 
call the uh, the method insert, okay? And you would insert an item um, x into position i, all right? So the, the first argument, this i, is um, the index of the element before which to insert the thing. So if you do insert 0, it's going to put it at the very front, okay? If you put uh, insert um, uh, 4, it's going to put it before the index 4 element, okay? Um, and, you know, um, if you do uh, a dot insert length of a, all right, so, th so that's going to kind of put it at the end. So um, uh, that, that would be, you know, insert, uh, you know, at the uh, length of a comma x is equivalent to kind of appending it, okay? There's also um, the function um, list dot extend. And when you extend, you can... Um, basically uh, uh, append all of the items in, um, in you know, any kind of iterable, like a list. So, so let me kind of show you uh, just some examples here. So again, I'm, I redefine the entire list, and I give it the name fam, and I'm going to insert into at index 4. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So before mom, okay? before mom and after 1.68, okay, or you can also think of it as um, insert it at the kind of the fourth comma here, um, we are going to um, put in uh, the, the string Joe. And that's what we get, okay? So between 1.68 and the string mom, we put in the word Joe. Okay, here I again redefine fam, starting off with this, and we are going to insert um, Joe comma 2.0 and so if we try to insert kind of multiple items here um, it's going to insert the entire list into this position so we're gonna have a list inside a list right so we might say well you know what if I wanted what if I wanted to um, you know put these things in but not <laughs> not as uh, not as a, a list embedded inside another list, okay? So if you try to use insert and you try to give it multiple things, multiple objects, uh, you get an error. So, so if I try to do um, uh, insert Joe and 2.0 at index 4, it says, nope, you cannot do that. You cannot do that, okay? Um, extend allows you to kind of put more, more things in, but it's always going to tack it on at the end. Right, it's not um, so. Here I'm passing it a list or an iterable with two items in it, and unlike um, insert, it's not going to insert uh, a list within a list. Right. So if I did, um, if I did append, then uh, then that's what I would get. But here I'm doing extend, okay, and it it doesn't put the list inside of a list. It just puts the, those actual elements. Right. So append only does one item, and it's uh, it, it uh, in, appends this um, this one object, which is uh, a list of length two. It appends it at the end, but here extend takes the individual elements, and uh, and basically uh, extends the list by that. Okay, so um, if you have multiple things that you want to kind of extend the list by, this this is the function to use. That's the method to use. Okay. So what if I wanted to do, you know, get this kind of result where Joe and 2.0, um, you know, gets inserted, but without the embedded list? And I think there was like a homework problem that uh, that I gave you, and you probably a lot of you figured it out. Well, uh, one quick way to do it, and you don't have to rewrite your solution or anything if you've already finished your homework, but one way is you can use um, uh, list slicing, okay? And you can say, all right, into um, the slice. 4 colon 4, which is really just this one comma right here, we can um, we can use slicing along with assignment to kind of insert multiple things. So when I do that, Joe 2.0 gets inserted uh, between the 1.68 and the string mom. So this is this is kind of a way to kind of slip or insert something into uh, into a list there, which is a, I, I think a pretty handy. Uh, idiom to uh, to be aware of. Um, okay, let's uh, let's keep going on.
there's uh, a few more items. All right, so you can do um, list dot remove. Okay, list dot remove will remove the first item from the list whose value is x. If uh, there is no um, item, it is going to return an error. So here I have um, this list. I'm going to say um, remove uh, remove Liz, <laughs> and then print out the resulting famine. Uh, Thing and, and we have this, okay? And so now we can see that that element has, has been uh, removed. Now if I, um, let me uh, run this again. We're here we would cr create this list. Now if I try to put something in that doesn't exist, right? So inside my list, we don't have a Bob, okay? And if I try to run that, I get an error. Uh, if I try to re say remove um, 1.70, I get an error because that doesn't exist. I can do 1.71 and that element gets that's, gets cut out. Um, if I have uh, multiple of the same, so if I have Liz 1.71, Emma 1.68, Mom 1.71, and I, and I do that, it's only gonna return the, uh, remove the first one, okay? It doesn't remove multiple of these things. So those are um, just examples of using uh, list.remove, so. Okay, um, pop, pop will take uh, an item at the, uh, at the given position, at the given index, and it will uh, remove it from the list, and it returns whatever it removed. So here I'm gonna do fam.pop, and if you don't give it an index, it's gonna remove the last element. So it's gonna remove 1.89, and it's going to return that so I can take the result of fam.pop and it will store, uh, I can store it into J, okay? So when I do this and I say, okay, after I do that and I do print J, um, then it, uh, J will be 1.89 and the resulting fam will be a list that only goes up through, um, goes up through dash, okay? Um, and so if you don't specify anything, it'll kind of pop things off the last um, and basically it's kind of like a, a stack where you can imagine having a thing where you append uh, additional uh, items and then you pop them and, and basically the last thing that got appended uh, gets removed. Uh, here I have um, pop zero. Pop zero will remove the zero index item. It will it will pop the zero index item. So here um, uh, the uh, Liz will uh, get stored as J, and then we can uh, we can do that. Okay, and then um, there's one more. Uh, one more uh, method clear and that's basically uh, it's gonna <laughs> empty out the entire list um, I don't know I have that in here so um, let me go ahead and uh, we'll run that and so we can see um, fam.pop0 it pops the first thing uh, pops the first element the zero index element as J so J is now Liz the resulting thing there and here if I do uh, fam.clear we're gonna result with uh, with an empty list Okay, so that's uh, that's what we have there. Let me uh, go ahead and give you your second view quiz answer. Second view quiz answer this week is or today is the letter E. E as in elephant. E as in elephant is your second view quiz answer. All right, uh, a few more handy um, list methods. Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch here. Okay, one is you can ask for the index. Okay, what is the index of the first item that matches uh, the value, right? So here I've got, again, I, I redefine my uh, list, and we're going to say, okay, what what is the index of Emma? What is the index of Emma? And it says index of Emma is 2, okay? So because Liz is 0, 1.73 is index 1, Emma is index 2. Now if you ask what is the index of something and it doesn't exist, so I'm saying what's the index of 3? we get an error. It says three is not in the list. Three is not in the list. Okay. Um, and, and again, kind of like, uh, was it dot remove, where it only matches the first one, it's only going to give you the index of the, uh, the first match. All right, so here I've got, um, there's another method called count, okay? So here I've got a list, and i got A, B, C, A, A, and I can say, well, how many times does A appear in there? And that's going to be letters.count, letters.count A, 
uh, returns the uh, the name three. Okay. Um, here I've got a list list with um, a list of four lists inside, and if I say okay, well, um, how many times does Emma appear? All right, Emma the string by itself does it e exist inside the list fam two? By itself it does not. Okay, so Emma is an element inside this list, but it's not an element of the top level list. And so um, so when it looks for when we say fam two dot count, it's only going to look at these um, the the four elements in there, each of which are lists of length two. Okay, but we can say, all right, do you have um, okay? How many <laughs> times does this particular element appear? A list where the first thing is Emma and the second thing is one point six a, and this is oh yeah, that that appears one time. Okay, there is um, we have sort, we have reverse. Okay. Reverse just takes the element, uh, the list, and it reverses it in place. So here I can take, um, say here is fam, and I can do fam dot reverse, and and if I say okay, print that out. Now uh, it fam itself has been sorted, okay, or not sorted, has been reversed in order. So you can see. Um, now it goes 1.89 dad, 1.71 mom, so on and so forth. Uh, fam dot sort. Um, well, if you ask dot sort on a list, it would try to sort it, but it's here. It's going to complain. It's going to say, you know, you have numbers and you have strings. You got floats and you have strings, and and I don't know how to sort those two things. Okay, so here it's it's going to complain to me and say I can't sort this list fam, which has a mix of of strings and numbers. But here I've got um, here I have uh, some numbers in here, okay, and uh, and I can sort this. I've got integers and floats mixed together, and it just uh, sorts in place, all right. So I just do some digits dot sort, and it's going to sort it in place, and it preserves the numeric type. It doesn't it doesn't care, all right. So here it says yep two two three four five point one seven and nine. And it's it doesn't kind of try to coerce or change the types, recast them as all floats, or tries to change the 5.1 down to an integer or something. It just sorts it, and doesn't complain. Okay, and and yeah, if if I say you know what is what is the type of this item at index four, yeah, it's a float, um, and uh, and that and that's fine. Okay, here um, I can take uh, you can also specify uh, for. Um, the sort you can sort um, in reverse order, right? So I can say sort reverse true, and it's going to go from greatest to least, and that's fine. Okay. Um, over here, I have a entire. I'm going to create an entirely new list, right? So lists are mutable, but every time you kind of use these square brackets, you're basically defining a new list. So even though I'm using the same name. <laughs> It's not that I'm changing the uh, the list that exists at some uh, at the name some digits. I'm here. I'm creating an entirely new list, and I'm just uh, using this name some digits to uh, to assign it. So uh, when you call sorted, and uh, and I think we we meant I mentioned this um, a little bit when talking about you know how do we name our functions. So sort will actually uh, the the list dot sort will modify the list, and then sorted. Which is kind of a passive verb, will the passive form of the verb will return the um, the object a, a sorted version of that thing without actually changing it. So here, if I say sorted some digits, indeed it has sorted from least to greatest, but the original list um, of some digits uh, remains unchanged. Remains unchanged. Okay, so that. Um, that's quite a bit in terms of list methods, and um, you know, my general recommendation again on standard library, Python standard library, and uh, you can go to the Python standard library, and it kind of contains all of the information for all of these different things. But um, but basically, um, lists fall under what we call sequence types. Okay, sequence types, and we can see strings are actually also sequence types. But um, you can just click uh, for lists. We've got sequence types, and we're going to go ahead and click there. And this uh, gives you the full kind of reference 
for all of the things that you can do with lists, tuples, and range objects. And so you have kind of these basic operations to you can see if something's in there or not in there. You can kind of concatenate things um, or concatenating things uh, multiple times and you can kind of subset or slice things and so on and so forth. Um, and there's you know all kinds of notes and stuff. Um, there are operations that can be done with um, the lists. So lists are considered immutable sequence types. And I think I've covered uh, you know a lot of these things, append, clear, copy, extend, and so on and so forth. Um, but these are kind of um, the reference of the different operations that, uh, that are allowed for, for lists, lists being mutable sequences here. Um, let's, um, let's continue on and talk about strings. Um, a string is uh, another type of sequence, okay? And it, uh, you can see kind of... Um, uh, you know, as far as uh, text sequence, um, we have the text sequence type, right? There's, you know, other references for the other reference uh, sequence types, the ranges and the tuples. But uh, the text sequence or the strings, um, you know, kind of come with uh, certain methods, you know, and, and they're all kind of listed here. And so, you know, I recommend uh, taking a little bit of time to familiarize yourself with the, um, I guess, the uh, the contents of the, uh, the the standard library reference here. But uh, I want to kind of point out uh, some of the things that we can do. So here um, I'm going to start off and just define a string, uh, fruit, uh, and it has the string uh, bananas. And we can subset this. And I can say, okay, what is the zero index element in this string bananas? And it's going to say, oh, the zero, the first element here is B. Okay, I could do what is the index one? And that's going to be an A index minus one. Index minus one is going to give us an S. And if you try to um, give, get, put something in like a float, it's going to complain and it's going to say, you know, it can't do that. It can't uh, subset and give you the um, uh, item at the uh, the 1.5 1, 1 index. Okay. Length uh, will tell you the length of either a string. It will also work for lists and it will tell you the length of the list. It will tell you basically how many items are how many uh, elements are inside that iterable okay you would uh, subsetting a string okay um, is is a lot like subsetting a list just here is um, <laughs> here's a string with uh, the alphabet a b c d f g h i j k and so on and so forth and so if I say slice from four colon nine okay it's going to go to uh, again imagine this were a list where you have kind of commas between every single letter right so um, it would come um, you know the fourth would come after the D and before the E and then going up to the nine would go uh, up to the I um, a after the I uh, before the J right so so you can kind of treat the string almost as if it were a list um, where every character is an element and that I think that would help make sense as far as how uh, string subsetting might work. Okay, uh, minus six is again counting in from the from the end, going six characters in. So we would go start at the U and uh, and go through the end. Okay, so we go from U through Z there. And then here you can you know you can uh, here I'm going to subset and take the first five letters and say you know for each element being each character in this uh, where I'm going to subset uh, slice out from 0 to 5 so a b c d e we're going to print that out append uh, an exclamation point and you, you know the the default for print is uh, each thing will end up on its own new line okay a b c d e okay so uh, so that's what we have strings unlike lists are immutable okay so when you use a method on a string, it's not going to modify the method. It will actually um, cre create a new string object. Um, so if you have, so here's our string um, with the alphabet here. I can't, I'm not allowed to say take the zero element and assign uh, something new there. So I can't take B and assign it to there because it doesn't support item assignment. It's immutable, okay? 
If I wanted to put B in, say, the, uh, the first position, I would have to kind of take the character B and then append everything after that first position. And so, um, so you know, this is one way to go about it if I wanted to replace, you know, in the alphabet, if I want to replace the A with a B, this, this would be one way to kind of um, uh, to go about it. But, um, but this is an entirely new string, and this string has nothing to do with this string. They are entirely new, entirely separate. Uh, strings are uh, immutable in that way. Okay, so here are uh, a few kind of methods that uh, that work with strings. Um, we can um, you can make things uppercase. You can capitalize them. Uh, title case capitalize will just take the first letter and make it capitalized. Title case does uh, first character of each word is capitalized. Lowercase um, and all to remember none of these things. Uh, actually modify the string itself. So here I have all caps stats 21 and then I have Python and other technologies for data science uh, written I think that's the formal name of our class um, and so here if I run them all this is what we get okay so uppercase puts everything in uppercase um, capitalize just capitalizes the first one and everything else is lowercase title case does everything in first letter but it doesn't you know Python doesn't know like the formal <laughs> English rules. It just sees a space and it says, okay, after a space, I'm going to put um, a capital letter. And so, you know, and uh, I think in normal English words, you don't, um, or titles, you don't capitalize uh, contractions and prepositions um, and articles and stuff like that. And so um, we shouldn't be capitalizing and, and we shouldn't be capitalizing for, but Python doesn't know that. It just says, oh, you know what? I see a space. Anything that comes after that, we're going to get a capital letter there. Okay? Uh, we got lowercase, and then again, the original string itself is, uh, is unchanged. Um, a lot of these uh, things we've kind of see, uh, seen before. So, one way is uh, so here's, you know, I can write a for loop that's going to iterate through the list. Uh, or through the character string and go through every single character and we can say well how many times does the letter E appear? I start off with count zero and every time I see it I'm gonna add one to the count and update my count and I get five. Now you can just do um, name.count and we can say alright the, the character E appears five times in the name okay um, name.index uh, where does the capital A appear and it appears um, at the third letter so index two um, does it end end with a K? True or false? Well, it doesn't. It ends with the character E. Does it end with the E? Yes, that's true. Does it start with an S? Well, it starts with a capital S. It starts with a capital S, so this comes back false. Okay. You can also create multiple um, multi-line strings using triple quotes. If you use triple quotes, um, here you get uh, multiple line things. Um, there's, a, there's a method strip. It's going to remove extra white space. Um, again, um, the the original string is immutable, and if you were to, uh, if you don't, if you call print, it prints out all the extra spaces. If you uh, just ask for the element itself, it shows you a bunch of new line characters here. There's a few um, methods. Split takes um, takes things, and anywhere there's white space, it splits them apart and it returns a list. So, um, so here it takes, uh, you know, Miles Chen with a bunch of spaces, and it just returns Miles and Chen in these things. Here I've got um, a string with uh, some digits and commas. Okay, when I do um, string dot split, the default is it's looking for spaces, so it's not going to split anything. This is still just one string with the thing in there. But I can say split on the comma, and now I have a list with uh, with five different elements in it. There is, um, if you wanted to convert these things into numbers so you can add them together or work with them, you can um, uh, put each of these things into the function int, and that's going to uh, make uh, take the, the thing and turn it into an integer. This thing is called a list comprehension, and I haven't covered this, but this is one kind of quick way, and you can kind of see how it works as it's basically um, creating a for loop for each element after splitting 
um, basically apply this function into x. All right, and we, now we get a, a list with integer elements in it. Uh, another way uh, I could have done this kind of, this you should probably be able to understand. I've created a for loop where um, you know I create the list by um, using um, the string dot split, and then for each element I'm going to start with off with an empty list and append. The thing I'm appending is an integer version of x, and we get the same kind of result there. Couple uh, other, couple more methods, and I'm sorry. Uh, let me go ahead and give you your last view quiz answer. Last view quiz answer today is the letter A. A as an apple. A as an apple. So, um, so you have that. Uh, I know I'm going over my time, but I wanted to give you a couple more methods. One is you can ask, is alpha? Is alpha? Does it contain only um, uh, letters? Okay. So, is alpha? Well, the um, name, which is the name of our class here, has uh, spaces and it has the digits 21, so that's going to come back false. But um, but a b b a a z, that is true. Uh, it only has alphabet letters. Okay, but as soon as I put the number four in there, is alpha becomes false. Okay, um, here I've got uh, the lyrics to a song, and you know there's. Uh, you can do stuff, right? So you can take the strong song and you can make it uppercase. You can take this song and you can split it, okay, at spaces, and uh, and it has that. You can also run split lines, and if it's a multi-line qu quote, it's going to put each um, each line on its own. Um, it's going to split at the new line characters, right? And you can also just count how many times a certain thing goes. Um, I've got a few more uh, things here, and I'll just kind of zip through them. Okay, you can say, "All right, well, can you can you search for this um, uh, character?" And uh, and here it searches for the uh, the letter T. There, um, find will um, will give you the index of the first instance of T, which is uh, index seven. Index is similar to find, okay? Index is similar to find. It also gives you the index of the first uh, thing that it finds. The difference, though, is if find can't something, find it, so here I say search for the dollar sign. That doesn't exist. Dot find gives you returns negative one, means I didn't find it. Whereas dot index will give you an error. So if it doesn't find it, it will give you an error. Um, okay. Uh, you have the in operator. This works with strings. It also works with lists. So is A in bananas? That's true. What about nan? Is that in bananas? What about B A D? Is that in there? No, it's not. Okay. You have um, you can compare greater than or less than. Okay. And uh, and it compares them in alphabetical order. Again, all capital letters come before lowercase letters. So capital Z comes before lowercase A. Uh, the digits, the digits aren't a weird thing, <laughs> okay? Um, so, you know, zero comes before double zero. Mm -hmm. One one alphabetically comes after one zero one, right? Even though numerically, you know, one hundred one is greater than eleven, okay? And as far as the symbols, the symbols are just in some arbitrary order. So here I just typed out a bunch of symbols along with numbers, some capital letters, and lowercase letters. And I say, OK, well, what is the order that they appear in if we sort them? And this is the order. So exclamation point comes before a lot of other stuff. But then like, you know, the position of the square bracket um, and the caret and these curly braces and these other symbols, it's just kind of very arbitrary all over the place. So. You know, once you get to a certain point, sorting um, characters is uh, is really weird. Okay, but anyway, um, that's all I have uh, for you today. So um, uh, that's it. Um, have a have a good weekend, and we will see you all on Monday in person. All right, bye bye.